The man blinked, holding his red gaze onto yours before he slid his face mask down. <laughs> Hi. Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Espoir Duvid, and today I'm going to be playing a game called Colored Gaze, an 18 plus visual novel where you play as a college student who works at a local convenience store. I like this. I like all of this. All of this I like. Well, let's, let's see who these fellows are. Colored Gaze. Content warning. Colored Gaze is an 18 plus... <laughs> okay. This is a game that's meant for adults. Once again, I will always censor out anything that's too explicit, but this game was still made with adults in mind. You can't remember the last time you'd gone out of your way to do things outside of school or your part-time for these past few months. It's been a struggle to live by yourself after moving out of your parents' house that it's hard to find free time to do whatever. Oh my gosh, I feel that. I feel that so much. That's why I have to record these so late at night. Having to juggle between college classes in the day and part-time into the night. Ugh. However, this year would be your last year. Soon you'll be free after you graduate. Or so you think. Then those student loans come at your butt. <laughs> well, more like less stuff to stress about and maybe get out of that gloomy convenience store. You sigh as you turn the doorknob to your apartment, wishing you weren't so weighed down by work and class. Maybe you'd get time to relax and meet someone nice. Oh, that's the dream, ain't it? Ugh, I'm so beat. You groaned, dropping your bag onto the wooden floors of your room, letting out a small thud. You plop yourself onto the comfort of your bed, making the most of each second of comfort you could, before preparing to work at the local convenience store in your neighborhood. This is a cozy room. Hmm, right, it's my shift tonight. Flip, can't I ever get a break? You whine as you get rolled to your side, still tired from eight hours of college lectures. You sit back up on the side of your bed in a tired hunch, letting out a heavy and drained sigh as you contemplate whether to go out or not. I really don't want to go, but... Head to work, the groceries won't pay for themselves. Uh, let's do the most chaotic thing and stay and rest. Ha 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 ha, the thing that you should not do. Now we're going to starve and lose our home, ha 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 ha. Don't do that. You shook your head, considering clocking in later instead and have at least an hour's worth of rest. You pulled your phone out of your pocket and sent a text to your co-worker, Avery, that you'll be arriving late as class would be taking longer than you thought. Hoping that it's enough to convince Avery to stay a bit longer in their shift and give you some time to yourself. I'm sorry, Avery. Forgive me. Forgive me. I'll buy you some sushi later, if you're into that sort of thing. Ah, uh, fine. If you're not here in an hour or so, I'm leaving. And don't blame me if you get fired for being late, part-timer. Rude, but understandable. Avery was obviously annoyed, but their threats are something you're already used to ever since you started working with them. You roll your eyes as you think up a reply that won't make him mad even more. Despite having a cute face they so pride themselves in, their actual personality didn't quite match. You even wondered why they even get dates at all. You sigh and text him back. Yeah, yeah, don't worry, puddle baby. And you do know I have a name, right? It's... Oh no, I've suddenly forgotten my name, and I have to depend on the powers it be to remember what my name is that my name is Espoir. It means hope in French. You typed it out with a hint of annoyance. You see Avery typing for five minutes, but pauses and leaves you on read instead. You grimaced. Oh dear. He's writing the great American novel, isn't he? Letting out a relieved sigh, you put your phone aside and did a stretch and laid on your back against the comfort of your bed. Just you hear a knock at a door and it's Avery and it's like, that doesn't look like class! Espoir! You close your eyes and not a moment after, you fall asleep. Uh oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh dear. Oh dear. Ugh. Not long after, the sudden sound of your phone vibrating scared you awake as you quickly grabbed it to see Avery's name on the screen. Oh dear. They've been calling you, and as you glanced over to the time on the top of the screen, 
Your brain hadn't processed yet that it had been more than an hour that you'd been asleep. You pick it up groggily and hear them yelling through the phone. Oi! Espoir! How much longer is this class of yours? It's way over an hour already, and I'm already late for a dumb date. I even ran into my stupid ex-boyfriend, and crap was so awkward. This is embarrassing for me. Hurry up, or I'm leaving this store with no employee. Chill out, fam. As expected, you put your phone at a distance from your ear before you go death from their yelling. <laughs> I mean, understandable. Understandable. Yeah, yeah, I'm already up. I'll be there in ten... In five minutes. Before Avery could start cursing at you in their native language, you won the call. Oh, what is their native language? You sit back up and rub the side of your neck, yawning. How long have I been asleep? You check the time again. You blink for a moment, and there the panic sinked in. What? Oh, crap! I slept for too long! Ugh! Gosh! Darn it! You cursed under your breath as you quickly pushed your phone into your pocket and got up from your bed. Hurrying over to the living room to grab your bag, and you rushed out of your apartment. Now I wonder, since he said he ran into his ex-boyfriend, is his ex-boyfriend somebody, one of the three guys that we would meet? And had we been there earlier, we would have met them? <laughs> Whoops. Oh well. Soon you're by the automatic glass doors of the convenience store, and you take a moment to breathe from all the running. You peered into the store and couldn't see Avery anywhere, so you assumed he had clocked out already. Ugh, they really did keep their word about leaving the store empty. Jeez. As you went inside, you let out a deep sigh. You made your way into the staff room, placing your bag into your locker and quickly dressed yourself into your work shirt. You walk back out and sat behind the counter, slumping down onto the surface as you waited for whatever being comes in. This is a gorgeous background. Gorgeous. You notice a piece of paper stuck to the cash register, which had Avery's handwriting that listed all that's left to do. Oh dear. Is it just on one sticky note or is it like a sticky note attached to another sticky note? A few hours had passed and haven't had anyone coming in. You let out a quick sigh. Alone again, inside the store, dead at night. Not many people come around this time. Most of the stuff is already in place. It's incredibly cold. Not to mention how gloomy and boring the store looked overall. The owners really need to upgrade their interior design. It looks pretty cozy. It does kind of look like a morgue, but that's it looks okay. Ugh, this is so boring. If only there would be a handsome yandery-ish man who would come in and, and uh, make my life even worse. You groan out loud whilst placing your elbows against the counter lazily, your head resting against your palms. You glance down at your watch to look at the time, and it wasn't even past 10 p.m. yet. You huffed out in a pout. Hmm. Hmm. I guess I'll do other stuff in the store for now. I wonder what's left to do. Standing up from your chair, you stretch to relieve a bit of the stiffness from sitting for too long behind the counter. Oh, jeez. Your eyes glance over to the little list your co-worker left and saw there was actually only a few things to do. Hmm. Supplier delivery and restocking the fridge. Huh. For once, Avery didn't leave all the heavy stuff to you for tonight, you thought as you looked at the paper. You put the paper into your pocket and headed over to the back to restock as you waited for the delivery for the store's supply. They get deliveries late at night? No, oh, we got them in the morning when I worked in a similar place. It didn't take long for you to be able to finish up restocking the store's fridge, and you find yourself sweeping the floor. Soon enough, you hear what sounds like a heavy vehicle parking over to the side. Huh, that must be it. Joe's here earlier than expected. Is it Joe? Is it actually Joe? You hummed in attention as you put the broom to the side and headed over to the storeroom of the place. It wasn't exactly fun having to move all the boxes into the storage room alone. Especially not with their usual delivery guy, who calls himself Joe something, wasn't really all that friendly. Now that you think about it, you're surrounded by really crappy people. No wonder you're feeling drained every time you work. And a little lonely, you sigh. You sometimes wish you could enjoy a bit of the fun side of college. You let out a heavy breath, then you hear a knock, then followed with an unfamiliar voice from the other side of the door. Hello? 
This is um, Blue Zip Delivery Service. Cute. Oh no, he has yellow eyes. Yellow eyes. Or are they brown? You opened the door and were met with a pair of hazelnut eyes and dark green hair. They seemed quite nervous. Oh. Uh, I kind of want to greet them back. Like, hey, what, what's up, fam? What's up? We're in here, in the convenience store, being bored out of our mind. How you doing? Greet them back. Oh, oh, hello. I haven't seen you around before. I thought Joe would be doing truck delivery. You tilt your head with a confused look. The man before you looked around nervously. It seemed like he wasn't used to talking much. Oh. He does look like the type to be a bit shy. After a moment, he stuttered out a reply. Ah, J Joe kind of got into an accident and is on leave, so I was t t told to take his place until he recovers. Aww. He had a soft, gentle, and smooth voice, you noticed, despite the grim news about Joe. Oh, dang. I see. I hope he recovers very soon. There was a short silence between the two of you. Dot dot dot. Well, I'm gonna be polite. Introduce yourself. To cut the awkward silence, you breathed in as you opened your mouth to speak. Ah, so, um, in the meantime, since we'll be meeting more often... He looked at you with brows raised, as if surprised. Might as well get acquainted with the nervous man. I'm Espoir. You? You give a small smile and reach out your hand to him to shake in greeting. He looks away shyly. His cheeks flashed a faint pink for a moment before he put his clipboard down to his side. Shaking your hand for a brief moment, he then replies in the same gentle tone. Uh, I'm Simon Lee Willows, or just Simon is fine. Aw, Simon. You couldn't help but smile even more. There was just something about him that felt nice. Was it his voice? His mannerism? Whatever it is, you hoped he wouldn't be as mean as the others. Cute! Oh no! Oh no! Interacting with new people was always hard, especially for you, but it seemed like it's the same for him. He kept apologizing with the smallest things like bumping you with his elbow by accident as you two lifted the boxes into the storeroom. Oh, at least he's helping me do that. Uh, I'm sorry. I must be really tough to work with. Oh, No, no, not really. You shake your head and smile at Simon, who looked quite flustered. Poor guy. No, no. No, not really. I'm actually thankful you helped me with carrying these boxes. Uh, oh, well, that's pretty much my job to help you, and I shouldn't leave all the work to you, but I'm glad. Oh. A faint flush of pink colored his cheeks, smiling. What he said made you feel a little happy. He was kind. You chuckle and patted his shoulder. <laughs> That's real sweet, Simon. If Joe was here, who would have just watched me do his work with carrying? W what? Oh, yes. You're very nice, Espoir. I. Oh. Suddenly, your phone buzzed loudly in your pocket. You quickly take it out. Eh? Already? Simon looked at you with a puzzled look. Is everything alright? You look back to him. The boxes are inside, so... Thank him for helping you and see him out, or kindly tell him another co-worker is about to switch shift with you. Uh, 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 uh. I guess I'll do this one, because it's at the top, and I'm gonna forget what I just did. And it would be a shame to just shoo the poor guy away. Ah, well, it's time for someone else to work at this time. Shifts, am I right? Ha ha ha. Well, thank you for helping me move these boxes in. Oh. Oh, no problem. I'm glad to be of help, really. He stutters with a nervous look as he places the last box of bottled water onto a shelf. You know, you're pretty cool. You see him stop for a moment and shyly turn to you. Oh, like I'm- Oh, oh no, a genuine compliment! Eh? <laughs> what? 
cool? Yeah, I mean, like... You pause for a moment, finding the right words to say. Giving compliments wasn't exactly your forte. Though this guy seems really nice and kind compared to the other people you've always been with. Hoping maybe you'd actually have a friend who won't bail on you or something else. It's nice to have someone to properly talk to, I guess. Simon blinks for a bit and gives a small sheepish... Sheepish. Simon blinks for a bit and gives a small sheepish smile. Aha, uh -huh, same here. My co-workers aren't exactly as nice as you, Espoir. Kind of makes it hard to come up and socialize. Oh. In a long while, you feel a bit of ease talking to someone. You two seem to have something in common, at least. Ah, that is true. But hey, for once I don't have to go home and gruel. Gruel? But hey, for once I don't have to go home and gruel about my day. So, see you again next week? You smile at Simon, and he returns with a shy look. You're probably overthinking, but his face looked more pink than before. Oh, I hope to see you again soon, too, Espoir. Oh, so cute. Drive safe, buddy. Y you'd take care, too, Espoir. Oh, you waved your hand goodbye to Simon as he returned to his truck. As soon as you've closed the back door, you let out a huge sigh and stretched your arms. Man, those boxes are so darn heavy. Thank goodness for Simon. Time really does fly when you're busy doing something. Didn't think it would already be 12. You text your co-worker back before you switch back from your uniform to your casual clothes. You took your seat back behind the register and said co-worker arrives sooner than expected. You tightly clutched the strap of your bag and stepped out of the store, walking back home. Nice. As you walked across the street, heading home, you let out a tired sigh. You looked around for a bit and turned at a corner. Around this time, you noticed how dark it was that night. Couldn't even see a proper street sign nearby. <laughs> you weren't sure if you were going through the right street at this point. You looked around again. Hmm, weird. Didn't I take a left earlier? Oh, I'm too tired for this brain. You groan in annoyance and wonder why people still aren't fixing the lights up. It's no longer a mystery why there's been a cra. Oh dear. Well, that's not a good sign. <laughs> it's no longer a mystery why there's been a crime rise these days. Oh no, not crime! Man, they really need to fix these streetlights around here. I could barely see anything with how dark it is right now. Suddenly, a freezing chill went up your back, and how cold and dark it was. You began feeling a bit anxious with your surroundings. Hmm. Now that I think about it, I really should be... Hello? Sir and or madam? What? You felt your heart beating faster, startled by a sudden sound coming from behind you. Uh, okay, I really need to hurry. Make my way downtown, walk in fast, walk in faster. Your blood ran cold as you heard it again, turning your back again to check if there was anyone. It seemed you were the only one in the street. Was... Was someone following you? Better not be. You're gonna catch these hands. You gulped at the terrifying thought. You held your bag close and kept walking at a faster pace. Whoever is following me, I need to lose them. Where do I go? Oh, don't make me choose. Uh, right. You took a turn to the right, taking a long path around your usual route. 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 Eventually, you managed to get back home in one piece, your heart still racing from the spooky encounter. Mm -hmm. You're back into the comfort of your own home, plopping down onto the bed, exhausted from work. Oh, man. I must have been hearing things and got scared for nothing. Ugh, I should really take that sick leave. You lay on your bed, recalling the events that happened throughout your shift. Hmm, tonight's been pretty eventful. Didn't think I'd run into such different people. But I guess it wasn't too bad. 
As you felt your eyelids grow heavy from tiredness, you drifted off to sleep as you lay on your bed in the cold and comforting darkness. Oh, that sounds lovely. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Was there something in that window right there? Edward me, was there something in that top left window right there? Right there. Can you tell me? Editor me. Was there somebody looking in my window? Better not be. Obviously, we have to go back and try some things a little differently. Like maybe getting to work on time. Uh, let's uh, head to work. Head to work. The groceries won't pay for themselves. You grimaced at the thought of needing to keep up with your rent and basic living expenses. As soon as you have all of your needed belongings, you open your phone to text your co-worker, Avery. You said that you'll be there in a few minutes, to which you receive a monotonous reply. Okay, hurry up. <laughs> you sigh and put your phone back into your pocket and head over to your workplace. As the sun slowly sinks, <laughs> as the sun slowly sinks down the horizon, the orange sky changes into the cold, quiet night. Gorgeous. Ooh. Brr. Dang, it's so cold out already. Oh, I'm sorry, you mean it's lovely? Because it's not hot? You felt yourself shiver from the cold breeze as you neared the local convenience store where you worked. You look up to see the bright flickering signage you know all too well. The name Conveni All Day illuminated the street in purple and white colors. It was honestly such a bad taste in design. Hey, I like purple. Soon, you're at the automatic glass doors of the convenience store and see Avery behind the register, scrolling through his phone, like usual. You let out a deep sigh and walk through the doors as soon as they open. Cute. Oh, you're finally here. I thought you were kidnapped or something. Shame. Forget you, he said in a sarcastic and annoyed tone phone in hand and clearly wanting to get out of his shift as soon as he could. Good to see you too, Avery. Rolling your eyes in response as you made your way into the staff room. After placing your bag into one of the lockers, you quickly dressed yourself into your work shirt. Suddenly, Avery went bursting in and rushed to change as well. <laughs> okay, so the manager said that I gotta leave the rest of the work to you. Since you'll be staying longer than I do, so here's all you gotta do. He hands you a piece of paper with his handwriting on it. It was definitely not from the manager. <laughs> Espoir, do everything! Hey, what? Uh, <laughs> Quick change, it was like a magical girl transformation. Actually, no, not like a magical girl transformation because it didn't take uh, 40 minutes. Okay, thanks. Avery, ho- Bye! I assume that's how he would say bye. Before you could even finish, he waved a hand goodbye and already sped off to who knows where. Well, he gone. Ugh, never mind. You groaned how you were left with a co-worker's unfinished work. Avery has always been like this. Yet you can't get a word out and he has the manager always on his side. Ugh. I guess that's what happens when you're a favorite nephew. <laughs> that darn twink... Someday the manager will catch them slacking. It'll also catch these hands. These unmanicured hands. Despite having a cute face they so pride themselves in, their actual personality didn't quite match. You sigh in defeat and head back out, taking your place behind the register. You watch as very few customers walk in and browse around the store as you help them with their purchases. Your usual, boring, part-time work, just to keep up with school and apartment rent. The school allowance from your parents wasn't exactly enough to cover up city living expenses. You didn't want to bother your poor old parents to ask for more. They barely have enough for themselves from their pension. You groaned, deep in thought, as the faint music from the speakers filled the store. Ugh, if only they could make me full-time and would pay me more if I have to deal with... Oh, hello, sir. You hear the automatic doors open and find a tall figure, suspiciously in all black clothing with a black face mask worn over his face and a cap. Oh, he's wearing a cap. He's clearly evil. His tall stature and vibrant red eyes, oof, behind the man's glasses gave a chilling feeling up your spine. 
It was quite dark now, and there have been reports of dangerous activity in the area lately. Oh, well, that's lovely. You gulped nervously as your eyes followed his movements. Ah, welcome to Convini, sir. You managed to stutter out your usual employee greeting to customers, hoping he was a customer. He raised his head, and you flinched as you noticed his eyes squint at you for a moment before turning around. Oh, thank Flip. You carefully watched him go around each aisle. You noticed he wasn't touching any of the items on the shelves. Like any normal customer would take a look at the items, at least. It was very weird. He was just staring at the items on the racks, then went to the next shelf and did the same. It's even worse, he's a health inspector! He's looking at all the stuff! He then turned his head in your direction, right back at you. You jump as he took notice of your gaze on him. You yelped in surprise and looked away. Crap! You let out a hushed squeak and could feel yourself grow cold, taking slow, deep breaths. Calming yourself in your mind. He didn't see me. He totally didn't. They're just browsing. Calm down. It... But then you hear a cough, as if to get your attention. Ahem. Excuse me. You flinched in surprise as you heard a man's deep voice, clearing his throat what sounded much like a growl. Oh. <laughs> you looked up, and it was the tall man with the face mask. He was towering over you as he looked down, locking eyes with you. Sir? <laughs> ah, yes. Is there something you n need, sir? You squeaked. The bubbling feeling of stranger danger wells up in your chest. That's not what's welling up in my chest. <laughs> he slid his hand out of his pocket, and you held your breath. The way the scene looked right now wasn't good. Oh no, looks like somebody's gonna catch these hands. Somebody's gonna fluff around and find out. Someone's gonna get engaged. <laughs> like, whatever you're pulling for better be a wedding ring because you're gonna have to marry me. Wait. Lowering your head down, avoiding the gaze of the red-eyed stranger... Could I get the one with the red label behind you? I mean the smokes in that case, Huff and Puff. That sounds like a terrible name for a cigarette brand. <laughs> huh? You lift your head back in attention and realize his hand pointing to the back at the cigarette case display. The man blinked, holding his red gaze onto yours before he slid his face mask down. Monsieur? Holy cow! He's got red eyes and shark teeth. Come on, sir, come on! I just felt like a wave of heat go from the top of my head throughout my whole body. I don't know what that feeling's called, but I like it. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry, you're gonna have to leave my store? You're far too handsome? Someone's going to come in here and marry you. Oh, sorry. Could I get the red label in that case behind you? One that says Huff and Puff. You blinked for a second. I did more than blink for a second. Oh, he just wanted to get a cigarette pack. You sighed in relief in your mind. Is that the, uh, the ex-boyfriend? He said. Your eyes panned down to his eerie smirk and noticed his teeth were really sharp. Yeah. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I did notice. <laughs> Not to mention the man had very vibrant red eyes. It was... Quite mesmerizing. Ah, oh, sorry. I'll get it for you, sir. Fumbling around and quickly opening the case to get the pack the customer asked for, you placed it on the counter. You noticed he also took a single piece of candy bar from the first shelf. Which surprised you, since you didn't get to see him holding it, as you were too focused on watching him go around. W will that be all, sir? Ooh. Yeah. Let be all. To see this man's face fully felt strange, as his features were very... unique. Your fear slowly became an interest. This caught you off guard as you saw him smirk, clearly teasing you about the way you kept staring at him the whole time he's been here. <laughs> I I'm sorry, it's just... I've never seen anyone like you before. Not many come in here in full black clothing, at night, with a face mask. 
You nervously mumbled as you scanned his items. You gulped down the feeling of embarrassment as you tried to utter out another apology to the stranger. A again, I'm really sorry if I seem, you know. Before you could finish your sentence, the man cut you off with a chuckle. Pfft, no, it's all right. I get that a lot. <laughs> I bet you get proposed to a lot, sir. It was colder than usual, so I had to cover up. Sorry if I scared you. Oh yeah, it is cold. All right, that, that gets a pass. He said in a much smoother tone as he reassured you that you didn't offend him in any way at all. You sighed as you smiled at the stranger. He seemed to be more calm and nicer than you thought. You watched him put his mask back up, covering his face once more. Don't worry about it. Mm, sorry, what's your name? I should have a name tag, right? <laughs> he asked as he waited for your response. You must have forgotten to put your name tag on when you changed in the staff room. Ah. Answer calmly. Answer hesitantly. We are, we are not calm. We are not calm. But I'll answer as calmly as I can. Oh, it's, um, espoir. Espoir? Hmm. Cute. Is that French? Yeah. Are you French? No. Then why are you- It's a long story. Eh? Cute? Kawaii des? Hmm. It suits you. Your cheeks flushed pink from the little compliment. You can call me Seth. Calling me Mr. is a bit too formal for me. Ah, I see, Seth. Nice to meet you, Espoir. The way he said your name felt strange, and saying that it's cute. You can tell the way his eyes squint, smiling behind that mask. Oh. You felt your heart flutter a little. Ah, I, I see. Fiddling your fingers nervously, just gazing down onto the register's screen. Still unaware of what else to say, you weren't exactly good at small talk, and he's still a stranger after all. You okay there, Espoir? You glance back up to him in a flustered manner. You must have looked really weird just spacing out, you thought. Oh right, how much is it all? You're suddenly reminded of the task at hand, and you fumbled around to look at the total. Oh, right. It'll be about twenty-five. He handed over a whole fifty-dollar bill, and as you were about to give him his change, he let out a short sigh as he, instead, pushed it over to your hand. Nah, keep it, as a tip. You lift your head up in surprise. He took the purchase bar and cigarettes, stuffing them into his pocket along with the receipt as he turned his back, walking towards the door. But before he stepped out, he gives you a look over his shoulder and waved his hand. Thanks for the cigs, Espoir. Catch you later. Uh, oh, come back soon, S I mean, Mr. I mean, Seth. Thank you for coming. <laughs> you returned the wave as you watched him exit the store. You sighed and looked at the change in your hand. I guess he's just a really nice guy after all. Totally not a Yandere stalker. Totally not some sort of really cool demon who's just coming to my convenience store to buy some cigs. You smiled and put the change into the tip jar. You hope to see him again soon. A few hours had passed and haven't had anyone come in. You let out a quick sigh, alone again inside the store, dead at night. Not many people came around this time. Most of the stuff is already in place. It's incredibly cold. Oh yeah, Simon. Cute Simon. Uh, who... Who are you? Did I ask who he was? No, I don't think I did. Excuse me, but who are you? You're not our usual delivery guy. Oh, sorry. I'm Simon. I I'll be the one doing your deliveries in a while. Looking away, he seemed even more nervous. Is this his first time doing deliveries? You squinted at him. Suspiciously. Huh? What happened to Joe? Simon looked down sheepishly, avoiding your gaze as he held onto the clipboard he brought. He, um, had an accident, injured his leg, and won't be able to work for a while. You hummed in response. It's very much like Joe to be pretty reckless, even with just parking. Ugh. I see. So, since you're here, I'm Espoir. Hmm. These are both kind of the same things. No, not really. It's fine. It's fine. 
You shrug and pushed one of the boxes aside. Well, you don't really need to say sorry every time we bump into each other. Oh, okay, sorry. Oh. As you got to move the last box into the storeroom, Simon looked to be even more quiet throughout the carrying. Did you say something mean? Probably. You looked over to him, and he held his clipboard, checking off something. You walked over to him. Alright, is there something I need to sign, or...? Ah! Espoir! G goodness! Y yes Here. He hands you the clipboard, and as soon as you're done... Suddenly, your phone buzz loudly in your pocket. You quickly take it out. Kindly tell him another co-worker is about to switch shifts with you. Switch shifts. That is difficult to say. <laughs> ah, sorry, Simon. I think a co-worker for the next shift is about to arrive. So I think it's best we move along, since we got all the boxes in here. Aw. Oh, well, okay. Yeah, I guess I'll see you till next delivery. Take care, alright? Don't break your legs! Yes, it was nice meeting you, Espoir. Aww. Oh. It seemed you were the only one in the street. Was... was someone following you? You gulped at the terrifying thought. You held your bag close and kept walking at a faster pace. Whoever is following me, I need to lose them. Where do I go? I don't know if it matters. Last time I went right, so this time we need to go left. I'll just turn left. There's more light, and I don't... Ah! Ow! You suddenly bumped into someone, making you stumble a bit, and grabbed onto that person's sleeve. Ooh. Okay, I guess it's not that different. <laughs> Looking up with a panicked expression, you felt yourself shaking a bit from uneasiness. Sorry, I didn't mean to bump into you. I, I think I'm being followed and- and... Oh? Oh no. Oh dear. Take deep breaths. Oh no. Characters with fox face. My favorite. Also older mature looking characters. Ah. You looked at the man. He did seem very concerned. Taking a few deep breaths helped you calm down, thankful someone was around to help. Are you all right, dear? Hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give him an accent. I'm gonna give him, I'm gonna give him an accent. He's gonna, he's gonna have an accent. He's gonna like it. Y yeah, I think I heard someone else's steps, but mm, sorry, I must have just been hearing things. You found yourself still holding on to him, which made your cheeks flush pink and quickly let go. Oh, oh, sorry. I didn't mean to hold on to you like that. So you see, that's where the trouble began. That smile. That damn smile. He gave you a small smile. I don't know who this guy is, but I like him. He's quickly shot to the top of my favorites. <laughs> it's alright. For now, it would seem no one's on your tail. R really? Are you sure? How do I know it wasn't you? Is that even possible? You gulped nervously, still shaken up from such an encounter. Yes, I don't see any other person other than you. Sighing in relief from the reassurance as you patted down your clothes, shaking off that uneasy feeling. Oh, thank goodness. I thought I was a goner. Oh, right. I'm Espoir. I guess the stress and darkness was making me a little jumpy nowadays. The man looked quite handsome and had a prominent British accent. Ha ha! He nods and puts his hand up for a handshake. You reach out and your eyes widened in surprise as he held it gently, leaning down to kiss the back of your hand. Oh, I see we have a smoothie here. Nice to meet you, Espoir. I'm Zachary. Zach for short, if you rather say. Zachary. Your face turned red from the gesture, looking away shyly. You felt him let go of your hand and you laughed nervously. <laughs> oh, wow, yeah. Do, do you usually do that when you meet new people? You asked, jokingly, a bit weirded out from the whole gentlemanly gesture from Zach. Zach chuckled from your question. Well, you could say that. Does that make you uncomfortable? Well, not really. I'm just not used to such things. I don't really mind, though. I don't mind at all. He smiled softly, and you put your gaze up to him, 
He was quite charming. He must be popular with people. You then remembered you were supposed to be home by now as you checked your phone for the time. Oh shoot! It's so late! I got class at 7 a.m. Oh my gosh, you get off at midnight, you gotta be at class at 7 a.m.? Oh my goodness, what's this world coming to? Uh, I I'm sorry, but I do have to get home. Mr. Zachary, will you please walk me home if you're not too, if you're not too busy? <laughs> oh, well, do be careful on your way home. I heard a few bad things happening around here. Yeah, but I can manage myself from here. Thanks for helping me, though. Don't go. It was really nice meeting you, Zach. Oh. Oh. I don't know what that sound was. <laughs> mm -hmm. I hope to see you again, Despois. Take care. Fox face. Hopefully he opens his eyes and his eyes are like really, really scary, actually. I love characters like that. I adore characters like that. Editor to me, put, put, up, put up my fictional husbands who have fox face. You waved goodbye to Zack and hurried over back to your apartment. You're back into the comfort of your own home, plopping down onto the bed, exhausted from work. Man, tonight's been pretty eventful. Didn't think I'd run into such different people. Yeah, I think I met everyone this playthrough. <laughs> but I guess it wasn't too bad. As you felt your eyelids grow heavy from tiredness, you drifted off to sleep as you lay on your bed in the cold and comforting darkness. Oh, that's lovely. Oh yeah, I can look now. There was somebody in the window. There was! What's up with that? Who was that? If it was Zachary, that's fine. That's perfectly fine, if it was Zachary. Oh, so he's this fella here. Oh no. Oh no, they're all cute. They're all adorable. They're all getting wedding rings. Well, that was the demo for Colored Gaze, and uh, I am already smitten. I love them all. I love all the characters. They're great. I'll take their entire stock. But uh, I think Zachary's gonna be my favorite. Keep in mind that this is a game meant for adults. This is an 18 plus game. So when more of the game comes out, there will probably be more 18 plus content, which I will have to censor. But I will leave a link in the description to the developers page and you can try this game up for yourself and follow any updates. I am very eager to see more of these characters and to play more of this game when it gets updated some more. So far, it is super interesting and I already really, really like it. <laughs> but let me know what you think in the comments. Who, who, who's your favorite so far? Because my heart's starting to belong to Zachary. Like, yeah, Seth is super cool and Simon is adorable and sweet and I, I want to hug him. But Zachary, whew, he just, he just came up and snatched that first place medal. He just, whew. All right, that's enough simping for tonight. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Take care of yourself. Have a great night. And remember, there is always hope. 